Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Goddess of Victory Nikkei video. Alright, so today we're going to talk about the new characters in particular Ludmilla in this particular video because uh, the other one Mika is not released yet. She'll be coming later on. There's also a new mini game as you can see right here. The mini game has a completely different format. So make sure you guys uh, follow through the game uh, guide right here. You do have memories for all of these uh character specifically is much more of a visual novel style of event there's special that will be unlocked later on and you can also uh, obtain some photos for the collection now let's talk a little bit about winter lumila i'm going to show you guys my pulse we're going to do a couple of testing uh, against bosses against our uh, regular minions and hopefully give you guys my thoughts at the end of the video she's going to be a much more complex character because it feels like she's going to be very strong against certain specific conditions certain specific bosses but at the same time, she might not perform as well against certain other bosses as well. So hopefully, I uh, will try to break that down for you guys later on. But first things first. So this video is sponsored by AnimeDakimakuraPillow.com Now if you're not familiar with what Dakimakura is, it's a body pillow that you can hug comfortably to sleep at night. As you can see, AnimeDakimakuraPillow.com offers plenty of varieties of different anime characters and design. So we have uh, Your Forger from Spy X Family, there's Ganyu from Genshin, there's Korone, there's Nezuko from Demon Slayer. I'm sure you guys are plenty familiar with all of these uh, famous titles out there. Now I know most of you guys play Nikkei, and if you are interested in any of the Nikkei characters, there are some that are available right here as well. For example, uh, Rapi has a very cool and sleek design. There's both the SFW version and an NSFW version. Also, there's one for Ennis as well, as you can see. And Helm, which is my personal favorite one. Now, they did send me a package earlier today, so we're going to try to unbox it. I did request for something a little bit smaller. So, this is going to be... Um, they basically sell a bunch of different products. You can order the pillow itself. Uh, it comes in multiple different sizes. This is 40 by 40 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put this on. So as you can see, I'm quite surprised by the uh, quality. It feels really nice. The texture looks really nice. It's very detailed as well. Uh, it's actually pretty HD. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are able to tell. It's not blurry at all, right? There's no pixels whatsoever. Definitely a very high quality uh, material and it feels really nice. Uh, I, I feel like this is definitely one of the better pillows that I've held uh, in terms of the quality. So make sure you guys check out the link in the description below. I'll have a link for you guys if you guys are interested. There's plenty of other products and right now they do have a holiday sale going on as well. And you can basically get uh, some of these special ones for free. Make sure you guys use my code ADP-GR for 10% off. Also consider following them on Facebook because they do have weekly giveaways as well. Okay, so basically you can, uh, as you can see, limited uh, Nikkei's can be recruited again. Let me show you guys. I think a lot of people are not aware. So you can see, it's going to be 4%. Alright, 4% as always to get SSR. And in that 4%, you have a 2% chance to get the pickup. In this case, it's uh, Lumila Winter Owner. If you, if you don't care about her, you will prefer Mika. She will uh, arrive next week. But... You also have 0.5%, 0.5%, 1 1% to get the all limited characters, in this case, Rupee Winter Shopper and Miracle Fairy N. Now, where did this 1% come from? Apparently, they reduced the rates of regular SSR, the others. Alright, so Pilgrim is still 0.5% collectively, added up together. And the other SSR, instead of, I think before this was 1.5%, uh, reduced to 0.5%. So you have a very high chance to obtain the new limited characters, but... If you really, really want to obtain the old characters, you don't care about the new character, you can always go for tickets, alright? So if you go here, you, you look at the gold tickets, uh, it is available there. So you see, you can buy the old characters using the gold tickets, which might be better unless, like, let's say you really want her, for example, right? You care about her, you don't care about the other two. It might be better to just use tickets because 0.5%, I don't know. It's like almost pilgrim rates. I think for new players, if you are trying to break the 160 wall, this might not be the best of the banners to pull actually. 4%. Reduce chance to break 160. Let's see. Okay. You fake out? No fake out. Alright. So the first 10 pulls has nothing. By the way, Lumila herself is limited as well. So next year, they are going to add 4 characters here and then they will introduce new 2 more Christmas units. I don't know. Then there will be like a lot of split. Boom. And let's see. Okay. I did not get it. Did not get A20 pulls whatsoever. Third time. 
is when you get lucky. Usually you always get lucky on third time. 4%. Okay, it's gonna be my, my next one soon. It's gotta be here. It's 4%, right? Wait, what? Where's the 4%? Come on. Come on, game. Come on. I mean, to be fair, I did one tap tough. So that's why I get for being too lucky in the previous banner. 50. 50. 50 pulls. Alright, 50 pulls is the way to go. Yes! 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 We're looking for Tetra, alright? Specifically, just Tetra. So now, 2%. 2% out of the 4%. Okay, now I'm a bit scared. Tetra? Yes! Yes! Tetra? Yes! Yes! Okay. Ludmilla, Winter Owner. Okay, so I'm gonna test with um, Scope Lock On. So everyone here is same level and maxed out, assuming they are Core 7. And I think their skills are maxed as well. Okay, her reload speed is quite long. I can see why she wants to have a uh, fast reload speed. Let's see, so far Ludmilla is doing slightly more, but this is a fire uh, element stage. So far, <coughs> that low level cut dress. Let's see if we can activate enough bursts to gauge the difference so far. Okay, can we get one more burst so that Scarlet can also burst twice and then we get a fair comparison. They both burst twice, Ludmilla and Scarlet. Let's have a look, let's have a look. 134. Okay, we are in the fire stage. Uh, I mean, we do have the elemental advantage. So 59 million versus 42 million from Scarlet, both uh, equal, at equal uh, strength. Uh, since I set it to to use all uh, from the Core Seven, uh, I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. Uh, 42, 59. Uh, let me try on something like Win, which I think both don't have elemental advantage. So this stage is neutral. Damn! Ludmilla wins. On neutral, Ludmilla wins. Okay, so so far we've been testing it with scope lock on. So let's turn it off and then let's use my own Ludmilla, alright? Which uh, have different skill level. This one is at max skill level, right? So hopefully we get a better gauge and see if this is like accurate in terms of the representation of how strong she is. Alright, let's go. Alright, moment of truth, alright? This is comparing a Ludmilla with no overload gears, skill level 556, five, versus Scarlet with full overload gears, skill level 10, 10, 10. Are you guys ready? I think that's pretty impressive. What do you guys think? Let me let me zoom in a little bit. So I think this is pretty impressive. Uh, the damage difference, you know, is there for sure. But keep in mind, uh, like I mentioned earlier, right? So this damage is coming off from a Ludmilla with 5, 5, 6, and 0 overload gears. Whereas Scarlet has full overload and is 10, 10, 10. And it is on a neutral element. In this case, I think it's a wind type. Now, if we were to test Ludmilla against today's special interception boss, which is Chatterbox, let's show you guys a little bit of a result right here. Alright. And you guys are going to be able to observe one specific thing. Ludmilla doesn't seem to do as much against Chatterbox. Okay? So as you can see, this is still uh she's still doing decent, but like Nora's doing like more than her. Now why is that? Now let's talk a little bit about this. Now, I was doing a bunch of testing uh, versus Modonia in both the Union shooting range and the story mode. And I noticed in Union Shooting Range, Ludmilla will be able to beat Modernia's damage. However, in the campaign, in the story hut where I'm at right now, uh, her damage doesn't even come close to Modernia's one. And I was wondering, why is that in particular? It took me quite a while to figure this out. And that's when I was able to figure it out. Core hit. That's where Ludmilla shines. Now Ludmilla shines in particular because of the skill too. And when she's able to hit the core for 60 times, she's going to be able to do additional damage. Alright, so this is going to be very very important part of a kit to be able to do additional damage. Now if she cannot hit the enemy's core, she won't be doing as much damage. 
So obviously, this condition needs to be met for her to be one of the most potent damage dealers ever. Now let's explain to you guys a little bit what is core hit. Some of you guys might not know. So if the enemy do not have core exposed, she might not seem as as useful. That's the thing. So blacksmith is going to be a better testing, but blacksmith was yesterday, right? So can you see every time I hit the enemy here, there's the word core hit there. Eh? Core hit, core hit. So because this, all of these raptures here, they they have cores. They are exposed. But not every stage is like that. For example, now notice I'm going to play this particular campaign, right? If you are not mistaken, the enemies here do not have core exposed. Like this one doesn't have. Like you can tell not all enemies here have core hit. This one has no core hit, right? This enemy don't have core. Or, or don't have exposed core, right? You gotta be able to hit enemies with exposed core. If you exposed core, you can see the word core hit. Uh, Blacksmith has that if you hit specifically in the middle red eye. Not many bosses have have exposed core, that's a thing though. Chatterbox core is not exposed. That's why her damage, she doesn't do much against Chatterbox. I think Chatterbox core is a shell, right? That one is not an exposed core. Does it make sense? Because if it does, it would say core hit. So if you look right here, right? So he has Missile Launcher 2, Missile Launcher 1, and Core in the middle. His Core is in this four, is, is, is in head, right? But it's not exposed Core. So notice when I hit Chatterbox, it didn't say Core hit. When you hit Chatterbox, look at the numbers. It did not say Core hit, whereas when you hit the Raptures here, it says Core hit. This is not considered exposed Core. That's why she doesn't shine in doing high damage against this boss. It's only Core hit after you break his helmet. Yeah, and ideally you don't want to break a Chatterbox helmet, right? So there's two types of core. There's exposed core, and there's non-exposed core, which is this type of core. This is more like a parts. I, I, I get what you're trying to say. So now that you understand the issue with Lyudmila, Winter Owner, we can try to break down whether or not she's going to be a good pull for a lot of players, and where she ranks against other damage dealers right now. Now let's talk about a few conditions right now, alright? So there's pros and cons, but we go through with the cons first. She needs the boss or the enemies in the stage, alright, depending on if it's a campaign or boss stage, she needs them to have exposed cores. If they do not, unfortunately, she's not going to do much damage, sadly. Uh, and Tia and Naga is going to make her shine even more because Tia and Naga is going to be able to boost the core damage overall. Now, if you do have Tia and Naga, definitely she is going to be a very strong character overall in some solo raids, in some union raids, depending on the boss, alright, it's still going to depend on the boss. Now, the pros is if she is able to have all the conditions met, these two, and also she has the elemental advantage, alright? So, including uh, the enemy is fire, and she will basically have the highest damage ceiling if all conditions are met. She basically can, uh, she will be able to do more damage than Scarlet, more damage than Modernia, more damage than Red Hood. Now, with that being said, all of these conditions can be a little bit uh, nifty because if you are new, there's a chance that Red Hood is still going to be a more flexible character where you can use her in all situations. Uh, Scarlet is still far more flexible. Modernia is still far more flexible. Now, if she were to be able to meet all of these conditions, uh, pair her well with all of these characters, Tianaga to boost the core damage and also the boss is fire, yes she should be able to do more damage than all those characters even. Whether or not there'll be a lot of opportunities for that to happen, we have yet to see, right? I feel like if you're a veteran player, you should consider just pulling one copy. I wouldn't go all in. She is a limited character after all. And if you're a new player, I would recommend pulling for someone who is more flexible, right? Blanc and Noir, that, you know, will be able to help you in almost all situations rather than someone that is just going to be specifically good in one specific condition. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the day one testing. Uh, again, let me know if you guys have any additional info that you want to share with everyone else. As always, subscribe, give this video a like, and big shout out to AnimeDakimakurapilo.com for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys check out my links in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.